Hey everybody and welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. One of the most common questions that I get is when do you think this market rally, this stock market bull market that we're having, the bull run that's been ha happening since 2008-2009 when the S&P 500 and the Dow and the Nasdaq and the Russell 2000 all bottomed out in around 2009 and then we've had a decade long rally now it's been 10 years since uh, actually it's been about 10 years to the day i believe today is the day while i'm recording this when uh, 10 years ago exactly uh, when it bottomed out and people ask me when's this going to end because they might ask me you know should i short the market should i short the S&P 500 or the Dow, NASDAQ, whatever, or should I buy an inverse, uh, some sort of inverse market ETF or, or a, like a long VIX volatility product? Should I buy TVIX, TVIX or VXX or UVXY, something like that? Uh, should I buy those in anticipation of a market crash? Because it's due, people will say it's due you know, it, it's we're now entering into the longest bull market in American stock market history. Uh, well, what, that's debatable. Depends how you measure it. Depends how you define what a bull market is, what a bear market is, and how you measure it. But it's either the longest one or the second longest one. If you know, there was a really long one in the 1990s. Uh, there was another really long one in the 1960s. So it depends how you measure it. But anyway, it's among the the longest bull markets ever. When's it going to end? Should I short the market? I would say don't short the market. That's a dangerous business to get into. Uh, if you feel like you must do it, which I don't recommend, but if you have to do it, then you could just take a really small position, uh, one that won't hurt you if it goes against you. But I would recommend just not doing it at all. Definitely don't buy, uh, in my opinion. I, I cannot tell you what to do or what not to do. But I, I for myself, I'm not buying uh, TVIX or VXX or UVSY and holding on to those. Uh, those have a lot of drag, which comes from Contango, which is, a, that's a whole separate video probably. But uh, there's a problem if you buy and hold uh, TVIX, UVXY, VXX, those types of uh, exchange traded products. Uh, and then the, even if the stock market just goes sideways for a while, uh, you're going to lose on your position. You're going to start losing value in your, in your holdings. It's kind of like an option that decays over time. Uh, now, if you decide to short the market by shorting the S&P 500 or SPY, uh, you know, the Spiders ETF or something like that, well, now you're going to have a problem anyway uh, because you've got borrowing costs. All right, it costs money. The the your broker is a bank and they make money from loaning you shares to short. And so, uh, even if the uh, underlying asset, even if the stock or ETF or whatever that you're shorting goes sideways, you're not at break even because you're. It's like borrowing money from a bank. You have to pay interest on that. So there's a borrowing cost for that. Uh, and if you short indirectly by buying puts on SPY, you know, the Spiders ETF or whatever, uh, now you've got drag on that position because even if the market goes sideways, if you bought a put option, that's going to have time decay or theta decay as they call it. And so it seems like no matter how you choose to try to short the market, uh, well, there are three scenarios. Uh, the market goes down. Okay, you might profit. Even then you might not profit because there's drag on your position, no matter how you get into it, whether it's through buying puts or uh, buying a, a VIX product or shorting the market somehow. Those all have drag on them. So you could actually have the market go down. And yet, if it doesn't go down fast enough and far enough, uh, then you could still lose on your position. But anyway, there are three possible outcomes. Uh, you know, either the market goes down, in which case you might win if it goes down fast enough and hard enough. Uh, okay, even then you might lose. But it goes down, uh, you might win. 
if the market goes sideways, you're probably going to lose because all those ways, all those methods of shorting the market, uh, you know, are going to have drag on them. You're going to lose money over time, even if the market continues to go sideways for a long time. Uh, or the market goes up, in which case you lose. So the market goes up, you lose. Market goes sideways, you're probably going to lose. Market goes down, you could lose anyway. Market goes down really soon after you put on your position and really far and really fast, yeah, then you can win, okay? But uh, there are more unfavorable possible scenarios than favorable ones, okay? And it's all unfavorable because this... The, the market, the stock market, has a tendency to go up over time. And so it's kind of like you're trying to swim against the ocean tide. Uh, yeah, it's working against you. The ocean tide tends to move in a certain direction, and you're trying to swim against it, and you're putting in a lot of effort to swim against something that tends to go against you. Okay, so you're going to be, by taking a short position in the market, you're trying to fight something that tends to go up over time. Doesn't mean that it goes up every day or every month. There are going to be months when it goes down. There are going to be entire years when it goes down. But the fact is that if, if you had bought the S&P 500 at any point in American market history and held it for 20 years, you would have made money. Okay, so a buy and hold position in the S&P 500, no matter when you did it, 20 years later, the S&P 500 will be higher and you'll have made money. Even if you bought at the worst possible time, even if you bought right before 1929 or right before 1987 or right before 2000 or right before 2008. Uh, well, that was you know that one hasn't been tested yet. The 2008 one <laughs> it hasn't been 20 years yet. Okay, but even if you bought right before 1929 or 1987, 20 years later, you would have made money just by buying and holding the S&P 500. And so that's pretty good evidence that it tends to go up over time. Do you really want to fight against that? Also, you've got a Federal Reserve that, by order of the president, basically. <laughs> is going to prop up stocks no matter what, or they're going to try to at least. Um, and that's been going on, and, and I'm not you know, taking a political stand or making a political statement here. This has been true president after president for a long time now, okay? Uh, this was true when Ben Bernanke was the Fed chair, and then uh, Janet Yellen, and then uh, now with uh, Jerome Powell. So this has been going on through multiple presidents of both political parties, all right? No president is going to want the Fed chair to do things that will tank the stock market. They don't want to get blamed for that. And no Fed chair wants that either. Uh, Jerome Powell, Jay Powell, tried in uh, 2018, tried an experiment in raising uh, bond yields, you know, the 10-year interest rate four times that year. He tried to be uh, hawkish, as they say, or aggressive with, uh, with tightening. And it, he, what happened was we got our fur as a result of that uh, and other factors, but chiefly as a result of that, we had our first bear market uh, since the financial crisis 10 years ago. So after that, Next thing you know, after that failed experiment, uh, I, I wouldn't say it was failed. Maybe he was doing the right thing by tightening, but it failed in the sense of it made the markets very unhappy, it made the president very unhappy, um, and it, it jeopardized his job because the next thing you know, uh, the president is threatening to fire the Fed chair. Whether he, whether he has the authority to do that or not, it, it just doesn't look good for the Fed chair and the president. They don't want to be remembered as the people who tanked the markets. And so next thing you know, in early 2019, the Fed is now very dovish, talking about being patient. That's very dovish. The people are actually talking about no rate hikes for the rest of the year, maybe even a rate cut. So if you try to short the market, you're going to be fighting against a, a, you know, a president and a Federal Reserve 
that is going to prop up the market or do everything they can to prop up the markets? Do you want to fight against them? Do you want to fight against the gradual upward bias of the stock market, which tends to go up over time? I don't recommend trying to fight against that. So if the question is, when is the stock market going to have a crash? Well, technically we had a bear market. I call it a mini bear, <laughs> uh, a mini bear market. Uh, but then it came right back up and really sharply came right back up and quickly in early 2019 so far. So, uh, you know, when is the market really going to crash? A la 2008, 2009 or a la uh, you know, in in the manner of to the extent of 2000, the dot com bust, 50% uh, crash. When's that going to happen? I'm not going to try to predict that uh, because whenever uh, people try to predict that, uh, they're wrong more often than they're right. Uh, so I don't recommend trying to predict. I'm not really much into predicting anyway. It's not something I try to do. I try to do as little predicting as possible. You have to do some predicting in life. Can't go through life without predicting at all, but it's a tough battle to win. So I don't recommend trying to predict when the next crash is going to happen. I'm not going to do it in this video, uh, that's for sure. Uh, and I don't recommend trying to short the market. Okay, uh, it, it can be a winning strategy if you're lucky, but trying to time shorting the market, you're fighting against the ocean tide basically not something I recommend so I thought I would have this little talk with you and for anybody who's thinking about shorting the market I don't recommend it as a good strategy doesn't mean you go all into the market either uh, you know diversifying into different asset classes is not a t it's not a terrible idea at all okay so I hope this helped you uh, you know if you want some more help if you want to uh, get some help with uh, some coaching or putting together an investing or trading plan. I do help people with that. Uh, you can email me at davidmodell at gmail.com for that. If this video is helpful to you, please give it a like on YouTube and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Are you shorting the market? Do you think it's a good strategy? It's okay if you disagree with me. I don't have a problem with that. I like to have a robust discussion on YouTube. And hey, if you haven't subs subscribed to my channel yet, why not do it now? It doesn't take you very long to do that and hit that notification bell on YouTube so you'll get updates whenever I put out videos just like this one. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.